Welcome everyone to worship here on March 21st with Trinity Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's so great to be with you all because next Sunday begins Holy Week with Palm Sunday and then on Thursday we're going to have Maundy Thursday worship. On Friday we'll have our ELCA collaborative effort of a Good Friday worship with all of those congregations of the ELCA here in Eau Claire and we're going to be looking at the seven last words of Jesus. It's going to be great. And then the following week will be Easter Sunday. And please uh, check out those times for Easter worship, and we look forward to seeing you uh, at, in the drive in style worship. We also are having our Noah's Ark fundraiser going through this Wednesday, so please go to the church website, click on the link, and order up those bacon wrapped stuffed chicken breasts. They are so good. And while you're at it, if you need to laugh, Go ahead and watch the video uh, that myself and Heather Day put together. Lastly, go ahead and grab those communion elements as we'll be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion during this worship service.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, that we may turn towards you and begin the work of repentance. Most merciful God, we confess that sin binds us and we do not know how to free ourselves. We tie guilt and shame to our own mistakes and the mistakes of others, failing to recognize, learning, and growing as a part of our process. We focus our energy on criticism as opposed to appreciation of human effort. We have used the words of Jesus to condemn instead of liberate. We have too often focused on measurable outcomes and failed to appreciate the abundance of your grace. We are sorry and we humbly repent. Forgive us and lead us in ways that free us from shame, free us from comparison, and lead us to delight in you. Amen. Hear now that promise of God, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. You are saved by faith, and your sin is forgiven. Through God's love, mercy, and justice, and by God's choosing, you have been set free from sin. Now with renewed hearts, let us serve others and honor the world God made, knowing the good news we have received is for all people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you come before us as we, be, as we continue to march towards that Palm Sunday entrance into Jerusalem. And so we pray today that you might continue to strengthen us in our Lenten journey. And more than that, help us to be that prophetic voice that you call us to be through our deeds and through our love and through our actions here on earth. Help us to live into that costly discipleship that you set before us. Amen. May God's peace be with you always, and also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. The reading is from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me in a willing spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. All right, well, if we've got some children watching out there, please come forward so you can hear and see it a little better. I've got a little spring project here. It's starting to get warmer, and I'm thinking about getting out in the gardens. I'm not really, but my wife is. And so I thought today I might bring a fresh pot and some potting soil and some seeds. So I've got the pot here. It's one of those great ones with holes in the bottom so it'll, it'll drain out a little bit. And then I pour in the potting soil. I don't need to have too much in there because I'm, I'm just doing a few seeds. And then the last thing to do is put in the seeds. Now I was 
um, thinking about maybe getting a grain of wheat but I didn't have any wheat uh, seeds at home so I'm just putting in some grass seed now if Mary Beth accidentally plants a flower in there boy will she be surprised when it starts coming up grass but here you go you just put in a little bit of seed and a little bit of uh, dirt and then of course we're gonna pour some water in there and in just a little while we're gonna see something do what little sprouts will come out of this this is some Kentucky bluegrass so it'll um, be a nice firm uh, grass and the reason I bring this up is not because I want to grow grass in a pot but because I wanted you to think about how simple this thing is that Jesus says in our reading today Jesus says that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains just a single grain but if it dies it bears much fruit Jesus is saying that we have to let those seeds go in that dirt and die in order for them to open up to new life that's the way things work and the people he was talking about knew all about planting things in the earth and and how that whole system works but what Jesus is really talking about is himself he um, uh, imagery is really important in the uh, gospel of John symbolism is important and he's symbolizing this seed going into the earth and dying in order to bring new life and that's what Lent and Easter are all about about Jesus being this seed that comes to us and has to um, has to die in order for new life to come forth and that new life is for you and for me and I know that this is kind of a tough thing to understand but just think about Jesus becoming this this new life that comes out of the ground uh, that Jesus has had to go away to die for us so plant some seeds this spring get them growing now so that you can move them outside later and just remember about that new life that comes out of the earth and also that comes out of the cross of Jesus mom and dad can tell you more about that as you have questions so thanks for coming up I'm glad you're here we're gonna read the story now in its entirety and then talk a little bit about more uh, what Jesus is up to there thanks for coming our gospel reading for this fifth Sunday of Lent comes from the Gospel of John chapter 12 beginning at verse 20 now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said to him sir we wish to see Jesus Philip went and told Andrew then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus Jesus answered them the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified very truly I tell you unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains just a single grain but if it dies it bears much fruit those who love their life will lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life whoever serves me must follow me and where I am there my servant will be also whoever serves me the father will honor now my soul is troubled and what should I say father save me from this hour no it is for this reason that I have come to this hour father glorify your name then a voice from heaven came and said I have glorified it and I will glorify it again the crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder others said an angel has spoken to him Jesus answered this voice has come for your sake not for mine now is the judgment of this world now the ruler of this world will be driven out 
and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends in Christ, welcome. I'm so glad to be here with you on this fifth Sunday of Lent uh, to kind of start winding things down from these 40 days of our season here. Uh, it is an incredible text that we get today, and I'm always thankful when we, we land in John because of the symbolism that uh, is so important in John's gospel and the way that, that uh, Jesus' words take on such incredible meaning. We've been moving along through this time of, of Lent, and we are just about at the end. Next Sunday, we've got Palm Sunday, and we're going to get to open up that box and bring out the, you know what comes out on uh, the, the parade with the, the donkey and the, the palms. We're going to have a great time. Um, and it will be a, a short-lived moment, right? It's, it's kind of a short-lived moment in this whole time heading toward the cross. But here we have this um, text from, from John that um, Jesus is gathering all people to himself, drawing all people to himself. And he does that not through being a great orator or, or by feeding thousands. What he's talking about in drawing all people together is our life through his death. This text is uh, coming after we've gotten a few clues about how that all was going to work. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got to preach on the, the text where Jesus is talking about tearing down the temple and in three days he will build it back talking about that life that comes out of the resurrection and then uh, he had the text uh, Pastor Tom preached on the text last week all about how Moses being lifted up uh, like the ser serpent being lifted up by Moses in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, uh, a symbolism of his, his cross and the type of death that he would die. So it is in this moment, back at this uh, festival uh, of Pentecost, where we get to hear um, what is part of the final discourse, uh, the final farewell discourse, as most people know it. This is his final public discourse uh, that we read today. And Jesus is going to fill it with all kinds of things for us uh, to kind of gnaw on just a little bit. First of all, um, not only are the, the Jewish pilgrims coming here, but we've also got some Greeks who are accompanying uh, this festival, and they want to see Jesus. Sir, we wish to see Jesus, is what they tell Philip. And, and that kind of starts everything off. And as Jesus is um, in, this, in this moment, um, he's, he's not answering their question exactly. He goes off into a whole nother realm. And he starts that off by the hour has come. The hour has come. Jesus is saying, the time is here. It's time for things to happen. You may remember uh, way back at the beginning of that Gospel of John, uh, in the city of Cana at a certain wedding, when his mother comes to him and he um, wants him to make some wine for the guests. And he says, woman, my hour has not yet come. Now he's signaling this is the time. This is when uh, everything that has been uh, foretold, everything that he came here to do was to be fulfilled. The hour has come. So pay attention. It's, it's kind of a, an interesting hour. So 
the ruler of this world has been driven out, Jesus says. Uh, the ruler of this world, and uh, the, the Greek word in there is akon, uh, which means ruler, not, not devil or Satan or anything like that. We often interpret uh, this text as saying that the ruler being Satan is being driven out. Uh, but I think Jesus has a broader understanding of that, right? It's the powers and principalities, those things that control our lives, that take us away from Jesus, um, they're being driven out. That's the judgment, that they're being driven out. And, and uh, ekabalo, ekabalo is the Greek word for being driven out. It really means thrown out. So Jesus has thrown out the ruler of the world and is now drawing all people to himself. It's such a beautiful text. And, and of course, um, when I'm lifted up from the earth, verse 32 says, Jesus says, I will draw all people to myself. Drawing all people, right? Right? When he first came, everyone was pretty sure he was there as the Messiah to the Jewish people. Now the Greeks are here, and, and who knows who else? But Jesus says that he's going to draw all people to himself. No distinctions. Through this death and resurrection, Jesus is drawing all people to himself. Sometimes, as Pastor Tom talked about, we, we like to have those distinctions, like there should be a little bit something that we have to do, and that's not the case. Jesus is calling us all to himself. And then down in verse 26, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me must follow me. To be a servant of Christ, to be a disciple of Christ, means serving where Jesus is serving, to go where Jesus is going. And that is um, reminiscent of the text that take up your cross and follow me. Taking up that cross, being where Jesus is, is truly at the core of what we're created to do. Of course, at Trinity, we have a very well-known mission statement, serving in Christ's love, sharing the good news. It's an important thing. It's supposed to be at the core of everything we do as a congregation, right? Serving in Christ's love. That's what Jesus is talking about, serving in Christ's love. And that serving looks so different. It can take so many different forms. In fact, our church council, your elected leaders, have been serving really diligently this past year, serving by considering really important, uh, important business, financially, worship-wise, gathering-wise, all of those things. That's what serving means. Being with Jesus, they're serving as the church council does. The church pantry, the food pantry, has never stopped serving. Throughout this entire pandemic, uh, they have found ways to safely serve those neighbors in need. That need is a little bit less right now, but at the beginning of the pandemic, it was so important to us to be able to continue to serve. Our Noah's Ark preschool, go ahead and get some of those chicken uh, breasts, those are incredible. Uh, that, that Noah's Ark preschool, never stop serving, right? We, we found ways to still gather and, and help make peacemakers out of these young children. Your staff here at Trinity has been trying so hard uh, to serve the needs of, of our people, to serve our community and our congregation. Uh, finding new and experimental ways pivoting when we needed to pivot to find ways to, to bring worship to you, to bring the kind of love and care that God wanted us to serve. See, when we're serving, that's where we see Jesus. 
It's right at that intersection of our serving that we get to meet Jesus. And even this decision of being out of our worship center for the last year was a form of service, a form of of loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, of making the hard decision, not the easy one, but it was the right one, right? Being able to protect all of our members was so important that we decided that it could only be done through online worship because of the COVID-19 virus. And so all of those things really feed in to this concept of serving. And as we're serving, we're sharing the good news. That sharing of the good news is the second part of our mission statement. Serving in Christ's love and sharing that good news. And I got to tell you, the good news that we find here in this gospel lesson is that the judgment is already behind us. The ruler of this earth has been driven out and God, Jesus, through his death and resurrection, is drawing all people to himself. In just a little while, we're going to be drawn to Jesus through the sacrament of Holy Communion, God's body and blood given for you. That is the good news here. Sharing the good news is always about serving Christ and serving in Christ's love. And so as we go forth into this Holy, this Palm Sunday and then Holy Week and then gathering back together, after April 11th, or on April 11th, to have some in-person worship for the first time in over a year, we keep that mission, that mission of serving in Christ's love at the forefront. That, That serving is going to look like wearing masks in worship and keeping physically distanced and not congregating together and hugging the people you haven't seen for so long and not singing in worship. All of those things are ways that we're going to continue to serve in Christ's love and to share the good news because we do it together with Christ drawing all people to himself. You gave your life to make a difference. You gave your life to make a change. You welcomed all to your table.
Please join me in the litany for communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection until Christ comes again. Let us pray those words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and see that God's meal is for everyone, just as it is for you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have set before us a feast of nourishment and grace. Help us to share that love and grace with others in every interaction we have, whether it's conversing on the phone, at work, or on the street corner. Let us be agents of your love in the world. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace to love and share the good news. Thanks be to God.